Good morning and welcome to the vlog. It's a lovely sunny day. There is a distinct blow of wind in the air that is also forecast for tomorrow and the day after. It's just as it was when I turned up yesterday. So I would ideally stay here, but it's only a 48 hour mooring. So I've got to move on at some point and it might as well be while the sun is shining. This will also be the first time of moving the boat since I changed the engine oil and filter. So I shall be keeping a keen eye down the engine hatch to check everything is well in that department. Let's just see how far we get today. But before I go anywhere, a quick reminder of why you should never moor under a tree. Bird poo. Lots of it, and it sticks like araldite. That cleared, I'm on my way, and just in time for another boat, which promptly took my space. Tick over speed past these moored boats, and quite tricky to keep my course, as the wind is really blustery again. You don't see many of those these days, a Morris Minor, if I'm not much mistaken. How do you like that shade of pink and purple? You wouldn't lose your boat in a crowd, would you? Remember how pleased I was a few vlogs ago with diesel at 63p a litre? You can see why when this marine is selling it for somewhat more. It's chilly today, but very scenic. round the corner and pull up to the first lock of the day. Locks are good exercise. Very easy to fall off these steps when wet, I'd imagine. Notice the gap in the bridge? That was to let the rope through that pulled the old cargo barges back in the days of horse-drawn working boats. No such necessity with my faithful Lister chugging away. Here's the obligatory ducklings shot. I knew there were dragons on the waterways. What a great bit of art. You don't see many of these either. Let's have a bit more wildlife. Some sheep. And fluffy goslings with their parents. This, I thought, weird, in the middle of absolutely nowhere, a one-boat-length bit of mooring marked as 48 hours only. Very odd. Someone who owns this patch of land has done their bit to brighten it up. Houses, and newly built ones by the looks of things, so we're approaching a village. This is Western-on-Trent, and it has an interesting little wharf here, full of workboats and tugs and that kind of thing. Through the village itself, and it's all very neat and tidy. You see a lot more solar on houses these days than you used to. classic canal signage here, though the arrow is a little faded. Back into open countryside for several miles now until we get to stone. I couldn't resist filming these. So cute. There's a long line of moorings here, and they're clearly very patriotic. Look how breezy it is. Sailors may snigger, but that's a lot on a canal. It has been interestingly windy today. I've spent an awful lot of time going forwards slightly at an angle across the canal, just to try and counteract the force of the wind. It's amazing, really, how a 15-ton boat can be pushed so easily by a bit of a breeze. I think this is called Salt Bridge, but I just love the intricacy of the brickwork. The railway runs alongside for a mile or so. Here comes a train right now. With the sun out, this is some beautiful cruising. 
At this point, the railway line carries on while the canal bears left and away. I thought this boat coming towards me would mean the lock ahead would be set my way, but darn it, somehow someone else got there first. Doesn't matter, chill and wait. It's canal time, and soon enough I'm in. With the wind picking up and exposed fields to either side, I'm thinking it's time to batten down the hatches and stop for the day. And though this spot is rather exposed, it's also very quiet and rather nice. So it's here I ended the day. Look at this view, it's marvellous. And there's lots of local wildlife to keep me company too. Good morning. After three days of really rather blustery conditions where I've stayed in this one spot and got some work done, it is a fantastic, calm, sunny, beautiful Sunday morning. My task today is to get into Stone here in Staffordshire, get some laundry done, possibly a little bit of top-up shopping, need to buy a birthday card and then get through and more on the other side of stone. That's today's target. Not far, I think about three or four miles and about four or five locks. It's a slightly regretful farewell to this splendid spot. I've enjoyed mooring here. Not a hint of a breeze today. The canal's like a mirror. It is quite early. The air and atmosphere has that smell of earliness about it and I appear to be the only soul about. Even the wildlife is only just waking up, youngsters lagging as they do. You know it's early when you pass the Sunday jogging club. They're very keen, aren't they? Every other boat I passed had no sign of activity. Up towards a lock at the end here, and past Aston Marina. Ahead, there's a boat already at the lock, but by the looks of things, that boat is moored on the lock landing. There's no sign of activity. You're not supposed to moor there. Lock landings are only for people to stop at while they're using the lock. But as it happens, it wasn't a problem. There was space to pull up behind it anyway, and I quickly went forward to check things out. It's definitely tied up and no one about. Also, the lock gates were completely open. I'm guessing the moorer may have done this to avoid anyone needing to pull up, although that would only work for the first boat through, of course. Either way, I'm straight into the lock with no problems. Starting to come into the town of Stone now, and it's still very easy, like Sunday morning. Mr Swan was out on one side of the canal, while Mrs Swan was having a spot of breakfast. I'd hoped to moor a bit further ahead, but can see it looks quite full up there with several boats, so I'll pull in here. Well, that was fairly hopeless. I managed to get some bits at the supermarket and I got my birthday card, but the laundry is not answering its phone, so I can only assume it's shut on a Sunday. I'm certainly not trekking over there with a heavy bag of laundry to find out, so let's press on. There were indeed many boats moored along here, a popular spot, although there were a couple of spaces left, I discovered. Through a couple of locks in quick succession and past a hire boat firm on the right, it's a lovely day and people are now up and about, dog walking, cycling, all that stuff. I really liked this old building on the right. Round the corner to another lock, but a quick stop at this services point first. And happy days, a lock keeper to work the gates and paddles for me. One more after that, Again, kindly done for me. 
and another of those random boat yards you find dotted around the network. Fancy a mooring? That's enough for me. What an exhausting day of going to the shops and enjoying the sun. I think I'll stop for a bit. It's the next morning and I'm off again. No time to sit and stare. Except perhaps at this. Who wouldn't want a railway signal box in their back garden? Awesome. I'm hoping it'll just be a short jaunt today, two or three miles, there's four locks to go through all in quick succession. The idea is to put myself just south of Stoke-on-Trent so that tomorrow I can do the whole of Stoke-on-Trent in one hit and if things go to plan I should end up at the south portal of the Hare Castle Tunnel, the Scare Castle Tunnel as I've been referring to it and that should then happen on Wednesday. No lockies about on this stretch, so my legs get stretched, pulling up the boat, popping ahead, setting the lock, opening the gates and so on. Let's jump ahead to the third lock in the sequence. Being off the boat, it's harder to keep it centralised in the lock, so the bow fender inevitably pushes against the front gate, and I have to keep a careful eye just to make sure it's not sticking on anything. Looking back along the boat, it's nice and level, Occasionally you hear of boats catching on bits of brickwork sticking out in the lock and in extremis this can end up flooding the boat so it's vital to always be alert when doing locks. At the top so nice to see this lock being tended and it's the local brownie pack who've done the business. Applause to them from me. A collection of wooden stop planks sits under this roof so the Canal and River Trust can block off the canal in case of any breach and stop all the water leaking out. Here, for your amusement, is my entire lock sequence of the day. That was all rather tiring. No more locks today though. You see the railway line has rejoined us, as is so often the case. You know how I like canal side houses, and especially those with garden moorings? Well, this one beats them all. Yes, there's a boat at the bottom of that garden, but look to the right and blow me, They've got their own mini boat dock in the garden. How fantastic is that? I love it. And lock gates in the lawn too. Absolutely terrific. But even the cottages without such splendour are rather attractive. Should you ever find yourself on this bit of canal and needing a few essentials, Behind those trees on the right, along the road from the bridge, is a convenience store. Under the bridge, and there's a pub on the left, owned by the actor Neil Morrissey, but I didn't try it. Despite that railway line, Barlaston's a sweet little place to stop, so here's where I'll pause before I tackle Stoke-on-Trent tomorrow. Cheerio. Cheerio.